Hey, this is Nicolette Moore from Nicolettemoore.com, and today is interview number six with Donna Wildman McMahon. Um, Donna has a very interesting story where she was actually introduced to network marketing by none other than her lovely husband. Um, so join us today to hear her story, how she got started, and where she's at on her journey to success with network marketing. Thanks a lot. See you on the other side. This is Nicolette Moore from NicolettemoreMore.com, and today I'm coming with uh, uh, interview number six with Donna Wildman McMahon. And uh, Donna has, man, she's worked for human resources and accounting as a manager for over 18 years um, before she was even introduced to network marketing. And ironically, she had just finished her master's in human resource management. And she was kind of mentally getting, she had taken a, a little break. She was getting mentally prepared to go uh, back into the career field. And then a girlfriend of hers introduces this network marketing, you know, concept to her. And so um, it's very interesting because instead of pursuing her career path as human resources, she said, no, I'm going to check this out. This is pretty awesome. So Donna, I would love for you to fill in the gaps and kind of um, let the audience know a little bit more about you. Um, if you're married, if you've got a family, you know, and um, and maybe how you were introduced to network marketing, a little bit more explanation than that. <laughs> sure. Um, as Nicolette said, I'm Donna Wildman McMahon, and um, I'm married and I have a fur baby, a little kitty. <laughs> I've never had any children. <laughs> Um, I live in Sarasota, Florida, and I've uh, lived several different places. We won't go into all that. Uh, I've been around a little bit. I kind of got gypsy blood in me. Um, and yeah, I was, you know, finishing up my master's degree and de was going back to work. So I thought until my girlfriend introduced me to network marketing, and I still wasn't sold it was my husband who said no we, we you know we're gonna try this he saw the vision <laughs> ah so i would love for you to expand on that what exactly attracted him to it and how did he sell it to you like sell the vision to you so that you were you uh, actually went forth and and decided to make that transition yeah well he's a realtor he um his former uh past life he was a pilot but he's been a realtor for like 18 years and um he knew he he knows residual income he gets all that i had never heard of it before until i got involved in network marketing it was like residual huh <laughs> um so he 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 knew the vision he's seen the potential for network marketing and we you know we went to some part some uh, what we call market parties in the company that i'm in and you know did a lot of research it was like three months before i was done with my master's degree that i actually um was introduced to the company and i was like well let me just you know get through with what i'm doing and that gave me time to do some research so we did a lot of research we fell in love with the company um so yeah it was like hmm, are you sure and he was like yeah we've, we've got to try this you know neither one of us are getting any younger we you know social security as we all know is not going to keep us going the way that we would like to go throughout our you know older years so um yeah that was basically I was like, okay, well, I'll try this. <laughs> okay, well, that's really cool. I think um, I think it's really neat to talk about residual income because I think for those that may not understand what network marketing is about or what the draw is, uh, residual income is one of the biggest um, components to being in the industry. Um, like a realtor, a realtor sells a home, he, makes, he or she will make a one-time commission. Um, and that commission can be quite nice, but they have to continually sell homes over and over and over again. Um, in network marketing, 
there's a particular structure in place and a team that's uh, in place and there's a potential for this really nice residual income. And so um, if you're curious about what residual income is, either look it up or even, you know, contact uh, Donna or myself after this interview and we can talk you talk to you about it a little bit more. But um, thank you for sharing that. That's really cool. I mean, it's, it's a very interesting concept. And um, yeah, it's, it's like, um, ex sorry, it's like he explains, um, you know, he's never had a customer or client come back to him that he sold a house and said, you know, year after year, here's, here's $100 for selling me a house. Right. <laughs> He's yeah. lucky if the if he even hears from them ever again, you know. And a lot of times they'll say, "Oh, you know, you were great. I'll refer you on." And half the time, people don't do that either. So yeah, right. And then realty is a little just tricky because you have to hope that somebody's needing to buy or sell. And correct. So yeah, it's a um, it's definitely you know and. And guys, too, just random side note, because um, I actually have my realtor's license as well. People talk about getting into network marketing costs too much money. Well, let me tell you, <laughs> if you know anything about realtors, realtors pay a fine fee to be in real estate. Mm -hmm. um, so I just, you know, really just consider that it's way it's less financially a uh, burden to start a business as a network marketer than it is to pursue real estate. And real estate is a hard market to yeah. get traction in. So um, just a small little side note, sorry as a realtor myself. It's, yep. <laughs> it's yeah, very dear to my heart because I know, I know the cost associated just to have a license, it's outrageously expensive. Yes, um, yes. And you do not get residual. So, no. okay, so, um, that's really cool. So you've been in it uh, right about a, a year now. You're actually coming up on your anniversary, and I'd really like to know. You know, your husband introduces this to you. You're, you know, uh, kind of a little hesitant about it, but you decide to say, "Hey, you know, I'll check this out. Residual in income sounds pretty cool." Um, what in this time frame has been the most difficult thing for you to overcome, either mentally or uh, emotionally? You know, as far as like transitioning from being a corporate lady and going into a you know small business entrepreneurial mindset and actually you know overcoming those issues to stick through and commit to staying in this industry I think the biggest thing for me is being home all the time um, I'm used to getting up in the morning you know you have a schedule when you're working a job you have a schedule you get up a certain time, you, you know, you do your thing, you go to work, you do your job, you come home. Um, as an entrepreneur, it, you know, you really have to, to make yourself do things and um, set a schedule and a daily method of operation. And, you know, and I still fight with that. Um, I'm getting better. <laughs> But yeah, I think that's probably, and then, you know, you're kind of isolated and I'm, I'm a social person. I like to socialize, um, being home all day. Um, it, it's tough sometimes. I mean, you know, I've even thought about hmm, maybe I should go get a part-time job just so I can get out of the house and go see people. <laughs> it's like when I go to the store, I'm like, hi, how are you? <laughs> There's people. Well, um, this uh, wasn't intended to be a part of this, but just <laughs> FYI, there are these really cool things called networking events yes, that yes. are going to be found throughout your city, your local yes. area. Uh, that's something that I take advantage of. I go to networking events because I have got to see people too. I totally get it. I love meeting new people. I love talking to people. I love... I especially love meeting other entrepreneurs that are on their own path and you know whether they're in network marketing or they're an insurance agent or they're another realtor or they own you know the donut shop down the road it's really cool to just be able to go out network and talk to adults and you know just be out there so I recommend you right. checking that out you know do yeah. that once a week or twice a week to kind of fill that need but um but yeah, yeah that is one of the, the difficult things about being a um, a small business owner or somebody who you know primarily works behind their their computer their desktop their laptop their iPad whatever it is um, sometimes you know we're in this world for network marketing which means we should be networking yes. <laughs> <laughs> and, 
<laughs> and so it, it kind of is it's interesting because your your goal is to reach out and touch and connect with people um, but then you're still so alone so um, All right. But you, you know, you just have to stay determined and, and make those connections. And um, and really, I think whenever you start to really connect, it it's really, really cool. Um, right. Because then it fills that need, you know, that social need that we have. Mm -hmm. um, okay. So what what's been the best thing as a result of joining into the this uh, crazy industry called network marketing? Hmm. I guess uh, personal development. I never got that before. Never even was really introduced to personal development before I got into the industry. So I would have to say that's been the biggest um, thing for me and the best thing is the personal development. I mean, I've learned a lot about myself, the good, the bad, and the ugly. <laughs> um, but um, it's just growing as a person and I, I have grown a lot as a person through the personal development. So I, yeah, that's probably the biggest thing and the best thing about being in this, this industry. Okay. That's really cool. Yeah. I mean, really, um, I, I didn't realize before network marketing entered my life, how, uh, intricately tied, uh, personal development is to network marketing. And I don't know that there's going to be a network marketing company out there that doesn't focus on personal development because as a small, this is a business and it's a small business. You know, you are, you are the owner, the operator, the boss. Um, and as that role, you know, you have to, like she said, you have to have a, uh, daily method of procedure. You have to uh, wake yourself up. You've got to do your work. You've got to reach out to people. You, you know, there are certain things that you're supposed to be doing every day and personal development ties all into that because if you're not in your, if your brain isn't right, if your mindset's not right, you're going to really struggle with those processes. So it's very, very um, intimately connected with each other. And so um, it's, it's almost like if you're not into personal development, you're gonna be, and if you can't right. stick it out, if you can't handle facing your demons and facing, <laughs> facing those issues, you know, this probably ain't cut out for you, to be yeah, honest. Exactly, exactly. Because you will, you will definitely learn a lot about yourself in personal development. And there's, I mean, there's thousands and thousands of books and, you know, people that you can follow and, you know, that, that have been in the industry for eons. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think that's the best, one of the best things about network marketing is the personal development. And like you said, there probably isn't a company out there, a network marketing company out there that doesn't, um, push personal development. I mean, I, I think it's just part of the industry. You have to, mm -hmm. if we didn't have personal development to keep us going, I don't think a lot of people would make it in the industry to be yeah. honest. Yeah. 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 So, um, a, a, in addition to the personal development side, um, really being a part of network marketing is uh, team building and being, mm -hmm. you know, you said you're a social butterfly. You're uh, the whole part point of building a team is to have yourself surrounded with like-minded people who also have a vision for their lives. And so, um, I'd be really curious to hear about your experience with mentorship in this, uh, in your walk, in your journey? What kind of mentorship have you gotten? Have you um, invested in a coach? What are your thoughts on those kind of um, concepts? Um, up until recently, I haven't had like a one a mentor that I was, I could actually reach out and touch. <laughs> um, up until recently, it was people that like Ray Higdon, you know, I consider him as a mentor. I, I love Ray Higdon. Um, there's Jim Rohn, there's Eric Worre. I mean, there's so many of them that I started following from almost the onset of getting into the industry, um, looking for answers, but, you know, resonated with these people and they've been in the industry for, for years. So, you know, I would follow them. Now, recently, I have been fortunate enough to have a mentor coach. Uh, I'm not in a coaching program per se. It's somebody else that's involved um, in another company that we're both involved in. 
Um, so, I mean, now I have somebody that I can actually reach out and touch and it, that's, that's been very helpful and, and very good for me um, to be able to do that. Um, so as far as what was the, I'm sorry, what was the rest? <laughs> Well, what are what are your thoughts about having that mentorship? Oh, how, how has yes. that affected your your journey, your path? Yes, you definitely have to have a, a mentor. Um, rather, like I said, rather it's somebody that you can physically reach out and touch, or it's just somebody that you resonate with and you follow online. Um, I highly do recommend, though, that you find a coach or a mentor that you can physically have one-on-one -on -one conversations with and talk to um, just because you, you need that. You know, if there's a coaching program that you can get into, by all means, get into it. I mean, even Ray Higdon, he still finds coaches. I mean, like I said, he's been doing this for years, but he still, you know, it's a growing process. You're never done. You never know everything in network marketing. You're always going to be growing and learning and, you know, reaching out to people that are making more money than you so you can learn from them, you know? So yeah, it's, it is very important that you have a mentor or coach. Yeah. That's a, a very important, um, a very important, important thing to consider is that, um, top CEOs, top executives, um, you know, these people that are running these big companies out there, I guarantee you they have got coaches. They have got business strategists who help them um, on their journey. And, you know, being uh, what you might consider yourself as like, you know, on the lower end of that totem pole, you're not, you know, making millions of dollars each year yet. That does not mean that you shouldn't have a coach or have mentorship because if you want to get there, you need a coach and you need mentorship. And so, right. um, so even for those of you who may not know who Ray Higdon is, he's um, in this industry. He is, uh, you know, dare I say, a badass. <laughs> and he, um, he, he had his own struggles and his own, you know, uh, plight trying to create his business, and now he's got it. And he wants to give back, and um, and so he's somebody that a lot of people look up to because of the struggles that he had and where he is today. He's got a lot of um, a lot of you know knowledge to share, and he shares it. And so, uh, yeah. So she might not, you know, Donna may not be having direct conversations with him, but she's still able to uh, glean from his wisdom. But um, the you know the people that she's able to connect with and actually have conversations with. That's uh, where a lot of growth happens. And so having somebody as a coach um, definitely can impact your journey and your progress because they're going to push you. They're going to see the greatness in you that you may not be able to see in yourself. And that's, that's invaluable. So um, what would be like the best piece of advice that you've received that has helped you kind of stick through the challenging times that you've experienced? Hmm. <laughs> Can you still hear me? <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, the best piece of advice: just do it. <laughs> just get over yourself and do it. I mean, I really haven't had anybody. You know, I can't think of anything off the top of my head that anybody has said in particular. Um. I mean, my advice would be, yeah, you just have to, you just have to do it. You have to be in it to win it. Yeah. You, you know? Yeah. So, um, that concept, just do it. It's like, um, I actually heard they say, you know, Nike comes up with this catchphrase, just do it. Well, why don't they say do it? Well, whenever somebody says do it, it's almost like a command, but just is a, is that push. Um, Mel Robbins actually talked about that at a, uh, a, a talk that I went to to see her um, recently and and she said it's just that push you need that that just just mm -hmm. do it yeah. just do it and just it's it. powerful psychologically for us and um, you know we we think oh we'd like to have this but something so far out of our reach but if you just take that one step you're never gonna 
you know, climb to the top of the mountain if you don't take one step at a time. Mm -hmm. And, um, and it's hard being at the bottom of that mountain and you just think, Oh, this journey is going to be so far, but every step, it just get, you get closer and closer and you just have to continue to hold on to that vision. So that's a great piece of advice. Just do it. Just, just do it. <laughs> um, so if you, uh, if you had to start all over again, um, and knowing everything that you know now, would you do anything differently in this uh, journey that you've taken over the past year? Yes, I would. Um, and I don't want you to take the, take this in the wrong way. However, oh gosh, is this a personal attack? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Well, whoever is going to be, you know the audience i don't want them to take this in the wrong way however if i were to do this over again i would um i would research my immediate upline i mean i, I and by what i what i mean by that is i would want to talk to other teammates i would want to know if who i am personally signing up under is um, going to be there for me? Are they going to help me? You know, especially somebody that's never ever been in this industry before. Um, I mean, I thought I had somebody that was supportive, but it turned out I didn't. So unfortunately, I've struggled a lot in this industry and. Probably had it not been for my husband, I probably would have. Already, I'm, I've several times I've looked for um, other, you know, work. It was like yeah, I'm done. I'm, you know, I have no support. I can't do that. You know, all all those mind games that you play. <laughs> um, but I think that that's probably one of the the biggest things that I would say. Of course, there's, you know. Um, research the company you know look at the leadership of the company um make sure that you love the product because if you don't love the product you're not going to be able to you know share it with other people that you know if you're just in it if you just look at a comp plan or somebody tells you you can make all this money in this company and you're like okay i'm in it doesn't work that way <laughs> you know if you're not passionate about the company you're not passionate about the products you're not going to make it in the company um so i think you know when it, when you put all that aside i think the biggest thing is you just you need to make sure that whoever you're signing under is going to be there for you unless you've had years of network marketing experience and you don't need any help then hey do do your thing <laughs> so essentially this kind of ties into not only mentorship but communication because Correct. Um, as the sponsor, whoever sponsored you in, you know, I don't know who they are, but they are human too. And so I know, um, I know a lot of times if we don't communicate our needs, you know, and, and we can't be open with each other, there's going to be issues that are derived from that. So if I have a heavy need, like I need somebody to hold my hand and they don't hold my hands, well then that makes me feel, uh, almost betrayed, you know, like I was vulnerable and I told you this and you weren't there for me. Um, but if you don't communicate that and the person doesn't have the opportunity to hold your hand, you know, so there's always this give and take. And um, uh, I think that's a, a very good piece of advice is that sponsors need to speak with their team and say, hey, what do you need for me? And then actually take that to heart and execute. So well, see, now we're talking about leadership. Yeah. Well, and that's it's all about it's yeah. all about leadership. Right. If you're going to um, get into this industry and you want a team underneath you, you need to be a leader. Mm -hmm. um, you can't do, you can't bring somebody in and expect them to, you know, grow your business if you're not out there growing your business. I mean, they, you know, your people will only do what you do. Right. So, yeah, I mean, that, that goes, I'm not saying that, you know, you have to hold somebody's hand by no means, you know, we shouldn't have to hold our teammates hands. Um, but if you have somebody that, like I said, that's brand new to the industry has never been in it. 
um, I think you need to take a little bit more time with that person and you need to guide them on the right path. And that's just, you know, being a great leader. Right. So, yeah. Okay. So if you knew that somebody was kind of curious about network marketing and they were uh, considering, you know, getting their feet wet and going forward with it, um, what, div what advice would you give somebody to help them make the decision whether it's for them or not? Um, they need to know, number one, are you coachable? Um, how are you with time management? Can you approach people, just anybody on the street if you have to, to talk to them about your, you know, product or your opportunity? Um, Again, going back to, you know, make sure you research the company. I mean, I think that's that's a really big one. But um, personally, I think if somebody came to me and said, hey, Donna, you know, I'm thinking about getting into this network marketing company, you know, what's your advice? I would say, you know, exactly what I just said. Are you coachable? Can you be coached? Um, how much time do you have to put into this business? Are you going to be disciplined enough to allocate X amount of hours a week to this business, especially if you're working a full-time job and you're trying to do network marketing on the side? You know, you, you've got to be disciplined. You have to be disciplined and you have to have time management. And if you're not that type of person, if you're one of those people that you expect to just sit back and the money's just going to roll in the door, um sorry <laughs> it's just not gonna work that way <laughs> yeah so network marketing is not a get rich quick it is not uh you know you sign the dotted line and then the next morning you wake up a millionaire it does not work that way it is actually a business you actually do have to put effort into it um but it can be a very rewarding and profitable business if you actually put the effort into it. So um, Donna, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate your insights and your input. Um, the beautiful thing about this is everyone I interview has a very unique approach and perspective and everyone has their own story, which is yeah. what makes it so cool. So um, really appreciate it and I'm very, very grateful for your time. So if anyone is watching this and they would like to get to know uh, Donna McMahon and would like to reach out and and uh, connect with you, how can somebody do that? Um, I'm at DonnaWildman.com. I'm on Facebook at Donna Wildman McMahon, or I have a fan page at Succeed with Donna. I'm on Instagram, which is backwards, Wildman Donna. And I'm on Twitter, Succeed with Donna, or Donna Wildman, I think it is, I'm sorry. <laughs> Just type in Donna Wild and I'm sure you'll find me. <laughs> I'm everywhere. All right, Donna. Okay. You might have to send me a text uh, message with all of that in here so I don't get it messed up. <laughs> I guess probably the best thing, just go to DonnaWildman.com and you'll find me <laughs> everywhere else. <laughs> Beautiful. All right, Donna. Well, thank you so much. Have a great day, okay? Thank we'll you. Right. Thanks. Bye. Nicolemore.com. Yeah. Look. You know she got you. Yeah, when it comes to the lead, she gonna lead you straight to the lead generation. It's what it is all about. Recruiting all the prospects. Yeah, that's what a shot. She helped you with the coaching. You know that she give you the potion. So you can go and move it through the ocean. Cause she there for you. She really cares. She wanna help you grow. That's why she there. So if you wanna get more, you wanna see this what's installed. Nicolette Moore.com. Get it, y'all.